Support for Stepping Out comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich. This program is sponsored in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support the arts and culture in the greater New Orleans area. Scott Laborde and welcome to Stepping Out with updates from the local restaurant arts and entertainment scenes. Joining me, Poppy Tooker, host of Louisiana Eats on WWNO Radio. Hey, Miss Poppy. Hello. Ian McNulty. Hi, Hi there. Ian McNulty, food writer for the Times Picayune, New Orleans Advocate. Hello, Mr. Ian. How you doing? Hi. <laughs> Doug McCash, who <laughs> covers the arts and culture scenes, also for the Times Picayune, New Orleans Advocate. Hello, Doug. Hey, how are you? And Alan Smason of theatercriticism.com and the Crescent City Jewish News. Howdy, Alan. Hi. Hey. Poppy, good news from Washington Avenue. Big news. Yes, today was finally the day that Commander's Palace reopened. And you have to hand it to T and Lolly. They have done the most amazing pandemic pivots. Let's see. I believe they were just about the first to offer wines from their collection of 30,000 bottles for sale directly to the public. That evolved into those wild Wednesday wine parties they were having with hundreds of crazy costumed people participating. And they even were one of the participants. You could get the turtle soup at Rouse's. But now Commander's Palace is back. They have spaced the tables out. You know how big it is. So 50% capacity. There's a lot of room at Commander's Palace. And the dining in the patio courtyard looks fabulous. But one of the things I'm the most impressed, really kind of blown away about, is their latest venture, Le Petit Bleu. And Le Petit Bleu is their new takeout venture. Uh, they're operating it out of their former executive offices on Washington Avenue, which is right there, like part of that brick fence line. And it's incredible. You can walk up and get all your faves to go, like jumbo lump crab meat ravigot, and of course the turtle soup and gumbo and that commander salad. How about Cafe Pierre lacquered Texas quail? If that's a boudin-stuffed quail with crystal hot sauce and a Grand Marnier and cognac jus. This is delicious. And credit goes to T and Lolly for allowing their entrepreneurial staff to take change, to take chances, try things out. And I just think Le Petit Bleu is going to be an excellent addition to the uptown dining scene. All right. Thank you so much, Poppy. And speaking of pivoting, the bars in New Orleans definitely have to do something, don't they, Ian? Well, Peggy, you're right. Uh, we know that New Orleans is still under phase two for, for the time being. That means bars are closed. Uh, but yet bars that uh, you and I know as bars, <laughs> that you, I, and state regulators would classify as bars, are back open in many cases. And the reason that they are is because these particular businesses were able to get a different permit from the state to operate as a restaurant. So that means that, that bars that you know before were definitely bars but had kitchens and you could go and get some pub grub or some, some food uh, are now permitted to recast themselves as restaurants and get some semblance of, of business back open. Peggy, they have to operate under the rules governing restaurants right now too so it's not they can't just be open as bars you to show up at these places you, you need to get a table you need to sit down you need to order food and uh they don't want anybody congregating around the bar uh they they've taken different measures uh to make sure that uh, the people you know, have assigned seats there's a certain number of people these are all the things that we've gotten used to in restaurants well now they're they're transferred over to these erstwhile bars that have been able to get back open uh, we bring it up now because, well, Saints football resumes on Sunday. And, uh, you know, of course, that's going to bring some people out uh, to try to watch the game out and about. 
uh, you know, I'll be watching at home <laughs> with some friends and a good spread of food too. But I understand that social urge to go out, to reconnect, to, to watch your, your, your team, one of your favorite old places. Uh, well, some of these bars have had a pretty good run of it so far. They, they converted to these restaurant licenses over the summer in some cases, uh, and they've got some practice now operating as restaurants. The key thing now, Peggy, I think, is for people who go out to them to get some practice uh, being <laughs> restaurant patrons at some of their favorite bars, right? So the, the urges are there, especially when the Saints are playing touchdown, first down, whatever. Uh, but the idea is you, even though it still says Cooter Browns or Mid City Yacht Club or the Chop Yard or Finn McCool's or Bayou Beer Garden, you are at a restaurant now. So have a seat, order off the menu, tip well to these staff who are now your waiters and waitresses instead of your bartenders, uh, and just be glad that. One little piece of New Orleans is back under whatever terms they can manage right All now. right. And, Ian, I'm so excited. I know you'll tell us about this soon, but Traps in Mid-City about to open, too. So that's another thing. So we'll whet everybody's appetite with that. Looking forward to it. And over to Doug, and the Ogden is bursting with art on its walls, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Um, the Louisiana Contemporary is an annual exhibit that tries to capture. It's a snapshot of art in Louisiana year by year. And this year, the 2020 exhibit is featuring 55 artists that were selected by a, uh, a guest curator from Miami named Renee Morales. And the, uh, the 2020 Louisiana Contemporary is a very 2020 show. As you can imagine, the artists in Louisiana have been interested in topics. It's a, it's a topical show, touches on everything from societal racism, uh, civil unrest, gun violence, COVID-19. And just a general sense of, of distrust or conspiracy, uh, fear of death. Uh, it's a very existential um, show. Um, one piece is, is made from bullets. Uh, another piece includes a, a vial of tears, as you can see here, r real or imagined. Um, Still another includes, um, includes the blood and uh, bodily fluids of the ailing artist. Mm -hmm. And even, even this beautiful abstraction, the title of it is Crisis Number Three. So that sort of tells you the, the tone of the whole exhibit. Um, if there is a thread of optimism that runs through it all, it's that the art itself is so triumphantly inventive and well-crafted um, that you feel uplifted despite, despite the topics. And, and there are a few pieces in the exhibit that are uh, uplifting on their own. There's a marvelous uh, painting of, um, of Fats Domino on an old, uh, on an old radio, um, which is just terrific. Mm -hmm. Yes, and though, that's what you're referring to. Those are actual, uh, here, here's the Fats Domino. That is so delightful. Yeah. That is so delightful. But that other piece by Mitchell Godet, that's bullet casings? It is. It's uh, something like uh, 23,000, I think, um, uh, AR-15 casings, yeah. That's amazing, yeah. Well, very ambitious, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Doug. And over to Alan. Boy, we certainly are going to miss one particular person on the um, local theater scene. She's going. Well, she's not actually gone yet. Uh, and, of course, uh, we're talking, Peggy, about uh, Amy Hayes over at Southern Rep. Uh, earlier this week, she announced that she will be departing this fall uh, as the uh, producing artistic uh, director at Southern Rep. And, of course, uh, uh, we got some pictures to show of Amy through the years, of course, uh, uh, doing her thing, as it were, a glamorous lady as she is. Uh, uh, we've got some uh, some photos to kind of show her through the years. But, of course, this wasn't not exactly expected because of the ongoing pandemic. Uh, very little money coming in for them now. Uh, they're, they're, they've uh, been doing a Herculean task of trying to uh, keep their doors open over there. Uh, and the new facility that they had with that unplanned $600,000 budget overrun, uh, it became uh, very difficult for them to, to keep the doors open. And, of course, now because of the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, they, they're not able to. So uh, Amy said that uh, it, she's going to help manage during that transition. Uh, you know, there's some pictures there we, you saw with uh, her uh, and uh, uh, several of the people that she's worked with through the years, including uh, John Broder from the 
Big Easy uh, Theater Committee and Marie Lovejoy there and, and uh, Jessica Podwell, who she worked with there with uh, Doll's House, too. Uh, you know, I'm really excited that, that, that you know, she's still going to be with them and she's not leaving, you know, all of a sudden. Uh, they are going to have some partnerships that they're talking about, too, with Tommy Myrick uh, and the, the Melange Dance Company. Uh, Tommy Myrick, of course, is with Voices in the Dark Repertory. Uh, they're even going to be working with Michael McKelvey. So it's not exactly uh, just a, a situation with, uh, with her transitioning out. They're going to be starting to do some more partnerships. And uh, they are announcing that they will have an interim artistic director in the meantime. They also announced that Shamin Debayu will uh, go ahead as uh, expected. That's by Pamela Davis uh, and Nolan. Uh, and uh, choreography will be by Jarrell Hamilton. So we're looking for that. So uh, we'll see what goes on. I'm, I'm hoping the best uh, will happen on Bayou Road for Southern Rep, and of course the best, of course, for Amy as she uh, moves on. Now, meanwhile, uh, those of you who didn't see May 25th, we had a production of Rosary O'Neill, speaking of Southern Rep, that was the founder, uh, her production of Maryland God, starring Allison Logan with Robert Pavlovich providing all the other voices. Well, guess what? The Jocunda Music Theater and Film Festival is in New York, and as a benefit for the Riot Theater, they're going to show it again. And they're also going to have a talk back with all the actors, uh, Allison and Robert, uh, as well as me as the director, and Rosary, the playwright, will start things rolling. Uh, again, this is going to be on Sunday. It's a fundraiser for the Riot Theater for Jacunda. Uh, if you want to go ahead and, and uh, uh, do uh, the whatever it is, the Zoom link, et cetera, the membership uh, that you're going to go through, you'll be able to, uh, to chat with us on Sunday night, and hopefully you'll be able to see that, uh, that production once again if you hadn't seen it before. All right. Thank you so much. And back over to Poppy and News on Herb Saint. Well, you know, <laughs> pandemic. Yes, exactly. Thank you. That, that pandemic alfresco dining option is everything to many people these days. And I wanted to talk about the options. First of all, you may not think of eating alfresco at Herb Saint, but there's tables all on St. Charles Avenue with the streetcars passing by. They're open again for lunch Monday through Friday and dinner every night. And oh my goodness, if you've never had Donald Blink's gumbo over there, or the guanciale and fried poached egg pasta dish about the loveliest thing in the world, the duck confit, head right on over there to Herb Saint and get yourself a little bit of that. And then... Gianna, the newest uh, in the Link group, they have lots of outdoor seating. It's all covered, so there's plenty shade. You can sit out there and enjoy a little antipasti and some wine. For an Amaro fan, they have so many choices, and you can enjoy flights of Amaro and a fabulous deal on Sundays. They're continuing with their Sunday supper, which is three courses for just $35. So Gianna is there Wednesday through Sunday from five until nine. And um, I'll toast you with a little Amaro soon. Okay, thank you so much. And back over to Ian. Ian, one local chef is taking crab cakes to a whole new level, isn't he? <laughs> Peggy, they call this place Pee Wee's Crab Cakes, but there's nothing small about it, not about the flavors, <laughs> Not about the personality behind it or the ambitions of this chef or what he's accomplished so far. Pee Wee's Crab Cakes is a place I've been following for a while. Uh, he first came to my attention when he was cooking out of a little takeout window on Martin Luther King Boulevard in Central City. This is Charles Pee Wee Armstrong. He's a Central City native. He started his business cooking crab cakes in his home apartment and just delivering them to you know a circle of friends that grew and grew and grew until he had his own takeout window. Well, flash forward to just this week, he's debuted a second location. This is in Gentilly. This is on Old Gentilly Road, right off of I-10 before the high-rise in the industrial. Pee Wee's Crab Cakes is his first uh, sit-down restaurant. It's the full restaurant where you can come in and find finally his dishes on plates. He's very proud about that. Uh, you can get them to go here, too, of course. But he's really excited to have people just come in and have a full restaurant experience. And, Peggy, let me tell you. This guy is onto something special. What he cooks is Creole food. It's New Orleans Creole style food. Uh, the roots of it are, are very clear, but it, it also brings in personality, his flair. This is a guy who came up working in restaurants. Uh, he, he gives a lot of credit to Al Copeland and Copeland's restaurants where he got his start. Uh, he's a, you know, a student of, of the big chefs and big restaurants of New Orleans. But he's also someone who grew up fully ingrained in the black street culture of New Orleans. And 
He's very intentional about bringing that into his restaurant. He parades with the Devastation Social Aid and Pleasure Club. He's been doing that since he was three years old. And he says that he takes inspiration from what he sees with the intricacy of the suits, of the sashes, of the flair of the brass bands. And he tries to work that into his dishes so that you have these dishes that, that have a lot of tradition but also just just bounce with style and identity and presence. And now he has a whole new place uh, to display this. Pee Wee's Crab Cakes on the go continues for to-go service in Central City, takeout window there, and also his full-service restaurant that opened in Gentilly. So check out Pee Wee and see what this guy's up to. He, he always, always impresses me. And I think he will be impressed, too. And, you know, Ian, the one on Martin Luther King's right by Claiborne, just to kind of give a little bit of a, a, a landmark yes, there. Right. But I, And I love the fact that in your recent article, you mentioned that he, he's decorated his new place on Gentilly uh, Boulevard with social aid and pleasure club sashes and really a part of the culture. Feathers, That's wonderful. Yeah, o o only second line music playing on the sound <laughs> system, family friendly place. There's no bar there. It's just soft drinks. You order at the counter. It's still really casual and very accessible. Uh, but now you can dine in and really soak up that experience. All right. Thank so, you so much. Good. And back over to Doug, the historic New Orleans collection. We've got some good news. Yeah, they have a wonderful exhibit um, by Susan Gislason. Uh, and Susan is a sculptor that you may know best uh, by her Mardi Gras float. She co-designed the two great signature floats in the Muses Parade, the Sirens Float and the Goddessy Float. And uh, anybody who's seen those will, will recognize uh, what she brings to this work. This show uh, called... Um, which is called uh, Land of Dreams, is so much different than the Louisiana Contemporary 2020 that we just talked about. Because instead of, instead of being, exam being an examination of these troubled times, this is sort of designed to be an escape from the troubled times. It is a, um, it's a very uh, um, uh, nostalgic show. It, um, it has to do with our reflections, with her reflections, on summer. And you'll see things like a bed stacked with books that, that seem to have popped up like uh, uh, mushrooms on the bed. Um, there's a mur there are mural-sized uh, uh, postcards that wrap the walls. There are um, there are palm umbrellas hanging from the city, from the ceiling, and uh, and um, lily pads uh, pasted to the ground. So it's it's supposed to bring about those warm feelings that we have about summer. Uh, the show isn't oblivious to social issues. Um, you'll see a juxtaposition between Pontchartrain Beach and Lincoln Beach, which uh, reminds us of segregation. Um, the uh, part of the exhibit that has to do with the Grand Isle Tarpon Rodeo will bring to mind the threatened coast, especially during hurricane season. And even coronavirus uh, has a role um, since the contagion delayed the opening of the exhibit. So we have a summertime exhibit that's essentially opening in the fall. But those issues aren't the point. They're not the focus of this show. Uh, this show is a respite. It's a place to go maybe to relax a little and, and, and forget about uh, our day-to-day -day concerns. Yeah, thank you so much. And back over to Alan for a little Broadway Online. Well, you know, you and I have talked about how amazing the technical wizardry was with the Seth concert series. <laughs> and it was doing so well for so many weeks. And then, of course, this past week, uh, you know, it was bound to happen. Uh, Karen Olivo's uh, concert uh, did not happen when it was supposed to. Then they rescheduled it, uh, you know, and it still hasn't happened yet. So uh, they did try, but but essentially uh, they, they're using all kinds of uh, uh, fast Internet to uh, get these uh -huh. two people in different places together. And, of course, what happened was one person had bad Internet, went down the other person. So eventually uh, they decided they're going to try to do this as a recording and then, uh, you know, try to regroup, reconnoiter, and get it up. Meanwhile, that's not stopped Mark Cartelli Productions from going ahead with the next in the series of concerts. He's going to have one more coming up this week that he's just announced, uh, you know, previously. And we've got three more to mention. Coming up this weekend will be Jeremy Jordan. A lot of people remember Jeremy from maybe TV's Smash. A lot of Broadway people remember him uh, as Clyde and Bonnie and Clyde, but probably most notably as Jack from Newsies. And uh, again, Jeremy Jordan will be the guest coming up on Sunday night. That's on the Seth Concert Series. And uh, usually, if just you 
little word to the uh, to the know uh, the knowing people out there is that uh, uh, if you wait till the last minute, sometimes you'll get a little discount of about twenty percent as well. So uh, that should go on on. Sunday night, uh, and then a repeat broadcast on Monday. Now, some of the ones that are kind of come up, let's tell you some fantastic Tony nominees and uh, Tony Award winners. Uh, first off, Judy Kuhn, who a lot of people remember from Fun Home. She's been a, a Tony nominee for four previous occasions, <coughs> has not won yet, uh, but she's going to be coming up in, in one of the weeks coming up, next week starting up, and then following that, the following week, will be uh, none other than Lilius White. You can see some pictures here that I had. Lilius is here where she was in New York. She got her Tony Award from The Life, which was a sort of story about the ladies of the evening, uh, and uh, a wonderful uh, singer. She's been on Broadway for many years and uh, a great performer. And then, of course, Beth Level, who was just here this past uh, October. You can see me with, with her. She's a Tony Award winner for the Drowsy Chaperone. It was just nominated for the prom just this past season. So some great Broadway stars available to you to see. Uh, and again, uh, you know, you can get all of that in your living room, in your pajamas if you want. Uh, clothing is optional, Peggy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, we're going to have our tribute to Ronnie Cole in a minute, but before we do, our picks of yeah. the week. Poppy. Well, Margie's Grill has reopened, and for lovers of Margie's Grill on North Broad, this is big news. But next week, it's the first in the series of chef pop-ups with Serene Mabey of Dakar Nola, and they're going to be popping up together at SoFab, where Serene's operating his Dakar Nola business. You order online Monday, you pick up curbside on Wednesday. It's a delicious collaboration. Go check it out. All right, Ian. Houdat Coffee Cafe, popular lunch and brunch spot in the Maroney, uh, temporarily closed back in June. A lot of people were upset by that. It was one of the first places we saw it had to close down. But they're back. They were true to their word. It was a temporary closure. They've come back. Uh, they have some new products. They have a new setup uh, for coronavirus safety and then more outdoor seating. So go check them out for breakfast, lunch, brunch, a cup of coffee. Great place. Okay, Doug. If you're driving on Franklin Avenue headed towards the lake, on the lake end, look for a mural by artist Ronnie Dents. And um, the wonderful thing about this is you think of a mural as something that doesn't change. And instead, what uh, Dents has done is uh, revise the mural four times to reflect uh, the changing times. And it's just terrific. All right, Alan. Well, I've got to tell you about NOLA Theater Talk again, Peggy. Uh, we have sound designers on the program uh, this weekend. You'll see uh, uh, Theo Fogelman from the National World War II Museum and Sean LaRocca from Art Spot Productions. But also coming up on Monday, Amy Rubin, the playwright, will be on. That's uh, September the 14th. And we're going to have Amy Rubin's Interstate 81. Her play will be presented Monday on September the 21st. I'll see you at the theater, Peggy. All right. Thank you so much. Pianist Ronnie Cole performed around the world, but called New Orleans, actually nearby Slidell home. We was very sad to lose him recently, and among his many career highlights was performing his Amazing Grace, his signature song for Pope John Paul II during the pontiff's visit in New Orleans in 1987. Here is Ronnie playing at the outdoor papal mass that was September the 12th on UNO's East Campus.
Kelly and his late wife Gardner were very close, and they supported numerous causes, including opening their home for fundraisers, benefiting Easter seals, and other fine causes. Um, they're both so sorely missed. Now my pick, WYES's Marcia Cavanaugh focuses on the impact of the pandemic on local universities in her next edition of Living in the New Normal. That's tonight at 8.30 and Sunday at 10 a.m. along with numerous other repeats there. Go to WYES.org for more info or you could watch it at WYES On Demand. Thank you all, my little pals. Good to see Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Support for Steppin' Out comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich. This program is sponsored in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support the arts and culture in the greater New Orleans area.